to the Lord be with you. Today we celebrate the great day of Pentecost, when Christ filled the church with the power of his Spirit and sent it out into the world to bring his peace, joy, and forgiveness to all human kind. And so, talking about forgiveness, let us spend a few moments thinking about those times when we have not fulfilled God's desires for us, and when we have fallen short of our promises to Him.
the Acts of the Apostles. When Pentecost Day came around, they had all met in one room, when suddenly they heard what sounded like a powerful wind from heaven, which filled the entire house in which they were sitting. And something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each of them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak foreign languages as the Spirit gave them the gift of speech. Now there were devout men living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven, and at this sound they all assembled, each one bewildered to hear these men speaking his own language. They were amazed and astonished. Surely, they said, all these men speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya around Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome, Jews and proselytes alike, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them preaching in our own language about the marvels of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. A reading from the letter of St. Paul's to the Galatians. If you are guided by the Spirit, you will be in no danger of yielding to self-indulgence, since self-indulgence is the opposite of the Spirit. The Spirit is totally against such a thing, and it is precisely because the two are so opposed that you do not always carry out your good intentions. If you are led by the Spirit, no law can touch you. When self-indulgence is at work, the results are obvious. Fornication, gross indecency and sexual irresponsibility, idolatry and sorcery, feuds and wrangling, 
Jealousy, bad temper and quarrels, disagreements, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies and similar things. I warn you now, as I warned you before, those who behave like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. What the Spirit brings is very different. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, trustfulness, gentleness and self-control. There can be no law against things like that, of course. You cannot belong to Christ Jesus unless you crucify all self-indulgent passions and desires. Since the Spirit is our life, let us be directed by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom, shall I, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who issues from the Father, he will be my witness. And you too will be witnesses, because you have been with me from the outset. I still have many things to say to you, but they would be too much for you now. But when the Spirit of Truth comes, he will lead you to the complete truth since he will not be speaking as from himself, but will say only what he has learned, and he will tell you the things to come. He will glorify me, since all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. Everything the Father has is mine. That is why I said, and he tells you, all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Brother. Social services had contacted him because his brother was frail 
and badly undernourished. He had his own house, but it was very neglected and dirty. After visiting his brother, who was in hospital at that time, he returned to the house to try and clean the place up. He was surprised to find thousands of pounds hidden in a suitcase in a cupboard. His brother had been a lawyer, and obviously a successful one, but since the death of his wife, had neglected himself badly. If his brother had made use of the money in the suitcase, he could have had a very comfortable lifestyle. But he didn't. And so he suffered the consequences. I tell you this story in particular because it seems to me that many Christians are like this. They don't call upon the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives. You see, they have a great treasure at their disposal and can call upon the Spirit at any moment for help. But unless they do, they may be undernourished, depriving themselves of the power of the Spirit in their lives, just like the lawyer who deprived himself of food and other comforts. In the Gospel today, we hear Jesus appearing to his frightened disciples after his resurrection. These fearful men are locked in a room. Their faith and trust in Jesus seem to have disappeared. Now he comes into their midst and offers them peace and joy. The opposite of faith is not lack of faith, but fear. We try to rely on ourselves alone, and as a result, they feel incapable of responding to what God is asking of us. So when Jesus appears to them in today's Gospel, he breathes on them and says, Receive the Holy Spirit. This recalls the first creation when God breathed the life into Adam, transforming him from dust into a human being. Here we have a new creation, now enlivened by the Spirit. This is a new transformation. If we offer our lives to the Holy Spirit for transformation, we will find that we will gradually be changed. Not just spiritually, but on other levels too. Emotionally, psychologically, and in our relationships. The reason why the Spirit wants to do this for us is because Jesus tells the disciples today that as the Father sent Jesus, he is sending them to be his witnesses. Christian witness comes from an inner conviction. This is only achieved by spending time with Jesus in prayer. People will know a real witness because they speak from personal conviction. And Christian witness is when a person is prepared to say and live by what they believe to be true. It's impossible to achieve our call to witness to Jesus without a powerful Holy Spirit who wants to help us. After breathing the Holy Spirit on them, Jesus then tells the disciples, those sins you forgive are forgiven, those sins you retain are retained. After love, the gift that Jesus spoke most about when he was with the disciples was forgiveness. In the Lord's Prayer, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, forgiveness is the only quality that has a condition attached to it. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. So why this emphasis on forgiveness? Look at the world around us. Nearly all the terrorist attacks, all the bitterness and hatred between nations, ethnic groups, individuals, even those claiming to act from religious beliefs, come from unforgiveness. In Israel, the Jews and Palestinians keep recalling what the other side has done and want to take revenge, and so the spiral of violence continues, even in the last week. Terrorists from all convictions keep remembering past injustices as they see them and so want to forgive, and therefore revenge is their only response. 
Unfortunately, this is true in so many places throughout the world. It's no less true between individuals. We've all heard someone say, I'll never forgive them for what they did to me or to my family. Jesus knows that the refusal to forgive will continue the spiral, violence, bitterness, and hate. He knows too that forgiveness is the gift and work of the Spirit. Human willpower is just not enough. We read in St. Luke's Gospel that as Jesus hung on the cross about to die, he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. How often do we pray for this gift of forgiveness, or at least do we want to forgive? In the first reading today, when the disciples had received the Spirit, they began to speak in such a way that everyone understood them. They were able to communicate to all their listeners the good news. In the second reading then, we are told that there's a variety of gifts given by the same Spirit, but all have the same goal to bring about unity, harmony, the very opposite of what unforgiveness does. Today's feast is clearly telling us that the Spirit works powerfully still in many different ways and in many different people. We are sent as witnesses proclaiming and living forgiveness. Difficult as this is, it has to be a central part of our witness. So, let us now pray for the help of the Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, renew each of us so that we can work together to renew the face of the earth through Christ our Lord. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven, for all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, who turned to God from the Father, God from God, light from light, in God from true God, and God from God to man. Let us pray to the Father. Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire. Let us open our hearts in prayer, seeking God's wisdom and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let tongues of heavenly fire burn away sin and doubt. And let us pray for clarity of thought and in our prayers. 
We pray for the enlightenment of the Church of God, for the Holy Spirit to fill the Church with the joy of the Gospel and cleanse the smugness and false sanctity which harms God's work. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our country and for Elizabeth, our Queen, and we pray that the Holy Spirit will enter the hearts of those set to govern over our land and guide them in justice and truth. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our country, we pray for Martin, our Bishop, and for all the clergy, for Father Kevin, and for Father Stephen. Lord, in your mercy, let us invoke the help of the Holy Spirit to heal and succour those in peril, danger, sickness and trouble. Give them strength, O Holy Ghost, in their hour of need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Today we pray with special intention for Jonathan, Liz, Jean Edwards, Bob Biggers, John, Jeff Owen, Sylvain, Ian Weir, Joe Connolly, Zoe Barrett, Jeff Allen, Barbara Jones, Catherine, Julie Dirksen, and Nadine, and for those only known to us. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for the souls of the faithful departed, those who now live in the light of God's grace, asking for their endless rest and a place for us with them at our journey's end on earth. We pray for the recently departed, Dennis McCarthy, and for those whose years mind falls this week, Beryl Plummer, Walter Bartlett, Cyril Jordan, Mary Wilkinson, Eric Choate, Cecilia Hobbs, Thomas Saxby, Edith Hannell, James Mars, Doris Jeffrey, Sarah Dampman, George Wiley, Ruby Potter, Muriel Goddard, Eileen Dodgson, Evelina Sturt, George Legg, and Ronald Laskett. Lord, in your mercy. May they rest in peace. We look to the saints to assist us in our prayer life. We ask the prayers of St. Richard of Chichester and of our patron, Archangel Michael, and all the angel host. And we ask particularly for the prayers of Our Lady of Walsingham, whom we greet, saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And in a few moments of silence, let us offer our own private prayer to God. Merciful Father, accept this for the sake of your Son, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us offer one another a socially distanced sign of peace.
yours and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. My Lord, accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good will in this holy church. Let us pray. Grant to pray, O Lord, that promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more than to me, faithfulness to your good sacrifice and graciously lead us in the world to. Same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this for you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only save me, and I shall be given.
had a recent birthday, so it's getting to that age, you know, where glasses are necessary. So I begin with publishing the bands of marriage between John Peter Racine, single of the parish of St. Barnabas Hove, and on the electoral road of St. Michael's Brighton, and between Ashley Jane Newton, single of the parish of St. Barnabas Hove, and on the electoral road of St. Michael's Brighton. If any of you know, if, if any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. This is for the third and final time of asking. So, just a reminder that we have um, the uh, annual parochial church meeting, the APCM for St. Michael's next week. Um, and in advance of that, we have got the accounts that are available back of church. If you would like to read through the accounts in advance of that, then uh, please do. So that'll be directly after Mass uh, next Sunday, St. Michael's APCM. And Freddie Hafoon, so um, Freddie from St. Michael's Treasure Seekers. Come forward, Freddie. Come, come and stand up here by me. Come and stand up here by me. So, Freddie, what have we got here, Freddie? Half and Freddie sponsored cycle for water aid. You're going from the Palace Pier to Rotting Dean. That's eight miles, is it? Wow, and you can sponsor them. And back. Wow. And when you're doing that, do you know when we're doing that? Next Friday. Sorry? Next Friday. Next Friday. No, next Friday. I hope you're all trained up. I hope you're all trained up, Freddie. Hold this up for everybody to see. So if you have a look at this, at the very bottom here, it's got a short, a short address to the Just Giving website. And I think it'll be very wise if you, if you hold that out for the leaving, so they can take a note of it. So I'm sure everybody will want to take a note of it. So we can sponsor Freddie. Is it also on? Is it also in our? It is. It's also in the booklet, in our bulletin, the second bulletin. It's actually got the shortened address as well. So please don't forget when you take your books from home to visit this and to sponsor it because not only do Harper and Freddie deserve your support, but WaterAid is a fantastic um, charity that supports getting water to all those countries around the world that cannot take it for granted. Well done, thank you very much. And we look to hear about how well you did um, after you, you completed it Friday, okay? You was trying to raise 200, but you reached over 300 pounds. Well done. Well, I think that deserves a round of applause. Well I know St. Michael's will want to see if we can make it more as well by the time you come back to see us after the next Friday or two. Um, we are still looking for um, some volunteers, please, for the serving team. We need people who can be uh, regular members of our serving team. So if you are at all interested or if you just want to have a chat about it, then please um, come and see me at any time. So um, I don't know if you noticed, but we have had our sanctuary lamps, our three sanctuary lamps, the hanging lamps with the, the red lights in them. We've had them uh, cleaned. Uh, they look absolutely <laughs> Spectacular! They look absolutely beautiful. And if you get a moment as well to wander down the side into the Blessed Sacrament Chapel, that one hasn't been raised yet, but it's there, and it that looks absolutely beautiful. It seems to have gone back a hundred years by the looks of it. It looks absolutely stunning. Um, if at all you would like to give towards those restorations, then please do. That would be warmly uh, welcomed. Uh, but they actually do make an enormous, an enormous difference. Um, so, thank you all very much for those who have given. 
And also the same with the hall. Thank you to everybody who's given so generously towards the hall. Uh, but also, if you are able and haven't yet given, uh, then please do. That would be fantastic. Now let's see what the kids have been up to today. So what have we been doing today? Drawing doves, drawing around your hands. Yeah. Oh, to make the doves. So you drew around your hands as the wings? No, we like to do the doves and then we draw around our hands. Ah, oh, I see, okay. Remember A to C. What was the dove symbolizing? Um, the Holy Spirit. Fantastic. And Simon dressed up as the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you did. And I'm sure you made a fantastic Holy Ghost. As opposed to a Holy Spirit, because you like a ghost. Oh. Yeah, well, all right, we we'll, we'll let him off to that. And that made it more fun, no doubt. Yeah. Excellent. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Well done. <laughs> Please stand for the blessing and dismiss <laughs> We may obtain the joys of eternal life through the 